Hello mate, thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, where do I start with this one? I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla recently as I'm signed on to Ubisoft Plus, the subscription, and want uh, don't want to hang around there for too long because I think it's overpriced. Start off with that tangent. So I should tell you my original plans for this video. Um, I'm basically thinking of doing a series called Start vs Finish, which gives you uh, an overview of how your abilities and the things you do in a game can change over time without giving you any story spoilers. So a game like Assassin's Creed Valhalla seems like a perfect fit for this, but I cannot finish this game. I, I don't think I have the strength within me to get through this thing. That's not to say the game is terrible and the individual elements are, you know, so bad that I can't bring myself to play it. The problem I have is its length. This thing is 65 hours long and that isn't a problem. There are plenty of big open world RPGs that have, you know, that the, the main aim is to put a lot of hours into and engross yourself in that world. But for me, at 25 hours in, I think I'd exhausted everything the game had to offer. I haven't finished the main storyline, so I know that in putting this video up now, I'm introducing the possibility that some things will change with the game because I'm only you know, a third of the way through, but the other elements which make up the majority of the game, which I'm going to go in, go through in this video, are far too constricted, far too narrow to function in a hundred hour game. So let me start with the story off the top. You play as the Viking warrior Eivor, whether that is a man or a woman is up to you, and I actually chose to let the animus decide, which basically puts you as the female or male Eivor at different points in the story, which is kind of cool. You start off in the very cold 9th century Norway, and after this four or so hour tutorial, I'll let you decide whether you think four hours for a tutorial is necessary. You decide to leave Norway to greener pastures in England. Once you make it to England, you set up your new camp, Ravensthorpe, which becomes the base of operations for the rest of the game, and the core premise starts to take shape where you build your settlement, um, gathering supplies and materials, and more people will come to you as you build up a reputation around England. To gather the supplies needed to upgrade your settlement, you need to go on raids, and these are in the monasteries dotted around England's lakesides, which you can go and raid to pillage and um, do what the Vikings do best, even though they are viewed kind of as the good guys in this situation. Assassin's Creed is usually very good with its historical depictions, and I do think that's the case in terms of the landscapes uh, look very good, but I'm not sure why the Vikings are the good guys. I'm pretty sure most of the raping and pillaging was done by them. Not that that's the former is in the game, because that would be... <laughs> A little out there. England is split into four different regions of the time, which splits the main story into four separate arcs. So you begin with Mercia, then you go on to Leicestershire, which if you thought Leicester was difficult to spell, try that. And this is the main storyline, but these raids you can do whenever you like. And each of these areas has a different power level. So you start around about 20 and it goes all the way up to I think 340. So as you progress through the story, naturally your power level will go up, which is another area of Assassin's Creed progression that I did like. The ability tree branches in three different directions, one into combat, one into ranged, and one into the more classic Assassin's Creed stealth-based abilities. While I don't think it's anything particularly revolutionary for the genre, I do think Valhalla's progression is pretty good, although I, I imagine a lot of people could see it becoming a grind pretty quickly with the amount of supplies you need to gather to upgrade your settlement. What I think ruins all of that progression is the combat, which underpins everything you do in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and it's incredibly simplistic. So to break it down, you have a light attack, heavy attack, a parry or block, and a ranged attack. And there are some variations on this. You can choose a two-handed weapon to give you a slightly different uh, secondary attack rather than a block. You can dual wield two melee weapons and there are a range of abilities you can use, again split between ranged and melee focused um, that you find throughout the world. But all of this pales to complete insignificance, in my opinion, because 
the heavy attack is really all you need. The heavy attack, whether it's from an axe or a sword or a flail, cannot be guarded. So all you really need to care about is hitting other people before they hit you. And fortunately, that's really easy because Assassin's Creed gives you a evade which cannot be <laughs> hit. You cannot be hit with this evade. It doesn't matter as long as you have the stamina to use it. So you can't just spam it. But if an enemy goes to attack you and you hit the evade, you're not going to get hit. It doesn't matter. So by making your heavy attack unguardable and your evade um, unfailable, it removes all the tactical elements to combat. So when you go towards a raid, um, th these are the only two things you have to keep in mind. And I understand that Valhalla is trying to encourage an aggressive style of play, which fits the time period. But if you're following the natural progression of the game, the way uh, it wants you to, you really ha face no challenges at any point in the game. Now, because of the way the monasteries and the, and the sections are laid out, you can go to a higher power level um, than your own. There's nothing stopping you doing that, which is what I did. So at 20 hours, when I'd f well and truly figured out the combat, I went to a power level 90 monastery at my lowly level 65, and it was kind of fine, to be honest. That wasn't a little flex, by the way. I had to take it a little more conservatively, but I had no problems. And I actually enjoyed the combat in this sections more, just because I, I had to take more care about taking hits. But at the same time, the combat wasn't any different. It just meant that any damage I took from enemies took half my health away. And you know, if this was just the case for raids, that would be fine. But every story mission boils down to attacking people in some way, except sometimes it's padded out with trailing missions and going to this waypoint before you engage in fighting. So very quickly, it became apparent that combat was the core gameplay element to Assassin's Creed, more so than exploration, more so than the parkour, um, and any of that kind of thing. And unfortunately, it's also the weakest gameplay element, which is a shame because I really do enjoy the exploration and the parkour, which in my mind were the core ingredients of the original Assassin's Creed games. And as they have moved away from that, you would think that the new elements would be better. But I do want to talk about the positives. The parkour is enjoyable in terms of the animation. All of that felt pretty smooth. I was rarely felt stuck on things or wasn't sure where I can climb, but that's because you can climb on pretty much anything and again, makes it very simplistic. If you need to get to the top of a mountain or the top of a building or the top of a hill, you just run up and the game does the rest for you. You can climb on anything. It doesn't matter if it's rain soaked waterfall rocks. You can just zip up on that up there whenever you want. There is a little more, I won't call it puzzle solving, but there's more thought to be done for the underground searching of loots, as I mentioned. So you can get um, kind of high level gear um, ingots, which you can use to upgrade your existing gear and abilities. Um, and these are the bits I enjoyed most. They're a bit more linear, but the key is that you have to sneak. So these are usually guarded areas. And this introduces the hidden mechanic of older Assassin's Creed games. I forget the name, but you have the main restricted area and a level slightly below that where if you're wearing a cloak and you don't alert too much attention to yourself, you can uh, walk through undetected. The AI here is a little more suspect at um, letting itself <laughs> be exposed for what it is. There are quite a few occasions where you will assassinate someone in plain sight and they just won't react. Playing through Valhalla, I really, disconnected with the RPG elements versus the stealth elements, which aren't defined stealth elements anymore the same way they were in the original Assassin's Creed games. Assassin's Creed has now become a glorified RPG with its roots in the original games, which Ubisoft feel are necessary to keep in there to keep to, for, for longtime fans of the series combined or not even combined, just kind of 
mashed up against each other with, I guess, what they would deem safe triple A RPG elements. Just think of other games that have 60 hour campaigns and how long it takes for new entries in those series to appear. I can't think of any others that come, come around every two years. Obviously that's because not many studios have the size, the capacity of Ubisoft, but I think the point still stands. I think a lot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is scale for the set for the sake of scale and not scale for the sense of possibility. And I mean that in the possible things you can do within the game. There are lots of different icons on the map that you can go to. So there are raids, there are assassin missions, there are side missions, there are beast hunts. All of them play out the same way, which is just mashing that heavy attack button until the thing in front of you is dead. It's like even the one beast mission I did had this setup where there was some kind of beast that had been mutilating animals and you had to track its trail and it leads you into a cave and you realize the cave is cursed. You destroy the curse and there's lots of visual effects that get all trippy, but it's just another woman dressed as a witch that you mash that attack button until she's dead. <laughs> And then that's it. And it's just such a disappointment for all that build up to dissipate into the same combat mechanics that I, you know, I'd done for 18 hours at this point. The Asgard dream sequences are pretty cool. I, I didn't realize it was going to be this whole map that you can explore with its own missions. But that first mission, you run across a bridge, then you smack everything with the heavy attack. And we're back to the same. <laughs> the same shit. And I think the worst thing is that this criticism has been in every Assassin's Creed game. Even if you go all the way back to the first trilogy, the first three games, there, there were criticisms that the mission structure is very similar. But back then the problem was all you ever did was track someone and then assassinate them. There's, there's less tracking now and there's less assassinating but there's in that in its place is just hack and slash button mashing combat, which I think is worse, to be honest. I understand that this series has been going for probably the best part of a decade now, more than that. And I understand that if they hadn't have tried to do something different, they would be facing the same level, if not more criticism. I just want to know when, when it ends, when this criticism of repetition in an Assassin's Creed game ends. And you might think it has, Valhalla was the fastest selling Ubisoft game ever. So I'm wrong, I guess. I don't hate the game as much as the title may suggest. Um, let's put it that way. It's filled with hyperbole, but this is YouTube and I'm, I'm only doing this for your clicks. So thanks if you clicked on this video. Um, please check out my other stuff. I have, this is the first actual kind of game review I've done in quite a while. My stuff is usually compilation or news based, but if you like this, please drop a like on the video to know that I can keep doing more of this stuff. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. That would be awesome. My, my video just cut out with two words left to say, excluding all this extra dialogue that I'm now doing to express what just happened. So let's just call it there, shall we? Goodbye.